all things has become new. Every one of us that is genuinely born again is not ordinary anymore. We have been born into the newness of life. Our spirit has been regenerated. We are born anew in him. Being born again simply means your spirit is being reconfigured to be in alignment with the spirit of God where you begin to bring forth the fruit of the spirit to which you are in alignment with. If you study Galatians chapter 5, Study from verse 20 down to 22. It talks about the fruit of it talks about it talks about the fruit of the of the spirit that actually reside in one. He said the works of the flesh. It talks about the works of the flesh. It talks about the works of the flesh and it talks about the works of the spirit in us, meaning the gift of the spirit in us. Can we study that scripture very fast? Galatians chapter 5. Let's start let's start from verse 20. We are coming back here. We are still coming back here. I'm just trying to lay emphasis on this scripture. If a man, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. He said, all things are passed away and all things has become new. What are the things that are passed away? What are the things that are supposed to become new? Please pay attention to this. Please pay attention. Please, I beg you, pay attention. Okay, now the works of the flesh. Thank you. He said, now the work of the flesh manifests. Which are these? What are the works of the flesh? Number one is what? Read if you are a Christian. Number one is what? Number two is what? The way you are reading it, I could see that you are not happy. Maybe some of you are guilty of the things you are reading. That's why your voice is very low. When you say you will be blessed, your voice will be high. Now let your voice be high, this one. Now let's go. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Number one. If your voice is not loud, you are a suspect. Number one is what? Number two. Number three. Number four. Lasciviousness. Go to verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and what? Heresies. These are the works of the flesh. People who are not born again, they are in alignment with the spirit that make them to give back to this. You see an average person who is not born again know much more about Christianity. More than the people that are Christians. He said, don't mind all of them. All of them are going to church are stupid. Don't mind them. They are only using them. Those are the heresies. They said things that are not true. Oh, the pastor is just using you. Lie. How many of you have I used here? Or rather, you are using me. Think about it. For some of you are genuinely, your eyes can discern and your glass is really open. How many of you am I using? To be a leader is terrible. Not to be a pastor. Oh dear. So, those are the erratic things they say. Why? Because they are in alignment with the spirit. They are configured with the spirit which is called the spirit of this world. So, if one is not born again, is the works of the flesh will manifest in these things. Idolatry, seditions, lavishness, and all of that, and all of that. Alright, can we move further? Alright. Envies, murder, drunkenness. So anyone who tell you that if you drink, don't be drunk. Is that correct? So if you drink, don't be drunk. That's what is wrong. It's a lie. If you drink, you are still under the spirit of worldliness. Say, oh, taking a call is not just right. And You know, the challenge with Christians is that we just listen to the gospel, we listen to the sermon, the thing look as if it's entering us, and then we still go back and return back to the nonsense we do. And this is why, you see, many of us who don't need prayer of breakthrough, the only prayer you need is prayer of repentance. Because the things you are doing wrong are the things stopping your life from moving forward. Many of us don't need the prayer of, oh God, deliver me from this. No, 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 you need the prayer of repentance. Simply because the things that will attract the favor of God into your life, you are already breaking that system that's supposed to bring the favor of God into your life. What you need is a prayer of what? Of repentance. So that you'll be free from the yoke of the devil that is taking away the favor from your life. Think about somebody comfortably swinging on the chair in the office and lying to me. Think about it. I don't know what the person is thinking. And then you will not come and say, oh God, is the prayer of breakthrough like need No prayer of breakthrough. What you need is prayer of repentance. The Bible said, he that tells lies, will not, he said, he that walks deceit will not dwell in my house. He that tells lies will not continue in my presence. Psalm 1 and verse 7. Now look at the works of the flesh. Envy, striving, murder. You say, no, don't worry. Drinking is just good. If I take a bottle of alcohol, nothing wrong. It's a lie. 
It's a work of the flesh. That's just a bottle of euro. I have it in my fridge. Hell. Work of the flesh. And look at this. When all of this is manifest in your life, works of the flesh. It's just one verse I'm explaining. Second, I'm just explaining 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. That's what I'm explaining. I've not even gone to the rest. Drunkenness revealing, and then such as, as of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the what? So they can go up with you, go to heaven. This is your Bible. This is your Bible. Laviciousness, murder, envy, strife. Those people will not have their part in the kingdom of God. So, because the whole man, this is the manifestation of the old man, the old nature. Can we go for that verse 22? But the fruit of the spirit is what? Love. The, spirit, the fruit of the spirit is what? If you still have somebody you don't greet, God is my witness, you are not born again. The love of God is not genuine in you. One of the boys who served us before left this church and then he stays around. So anytime he sees me, he runs away. So one day I called him. I said, Why are you running from me? So I hug him. I even gave him money. He said, You're going to any transport? I said, I don't have issues with you. And the headache he caused me. If I told Odun, is the boy I hug. Odun will fight me. Because the headache was much, but nevertheless, you have gone, you have gone. So I don't want God to block my prayers. I have the Spirit of God in me. Many people take advantage of that, but it does not matter. I live a very free life. And that's why I can't be sick. When you are constantly getting sick, don't think it's an attack. Check the people you are keeping malice against. Ah, Maskaba. This is not my sermon tonight. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Move further. Move further to verse 23. Meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no what? Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. That's what we are studying. And then we have moved to Galatians chapter 5. You know, elderly, you have to, you know, those days they do a stamina class for elderly people. So I can do the same at the same time. Are we together? Yes. All right. Glory to God. So if genuinely there is no, if these things are not in your life, let's read. Go to verse 22. Verse 22. Let's see for verse 22. Don't worry. Sorry for the people here. Don't worry. The TV will be ready between us Sunday. I promise. You. Verse 22. Are we still there? Now, there's water in the fridge in case you have not broken your fast. All right. All right, let's read together. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? No. If, you truly have, if you are truly born again, there is a fruit that we must see. He said, you are, no more, you are not part of the old creature anymore. You have been born anew. And in that newness of life, there is a fruit that testifies that you are in. Number one is love. Number two is joy. Number three is what? Don't think you understand this things. I wish this is what I want to preach about. Don't think you understand. That in the midst of trouble, you are at peace. That people are troubling you yet, there's peace. One day, one woman came to me and he started complaining about the husband and he complained about the husband for many years. He said, my husband is this. So I told the woman, I said, what have you done to compliment your husband? If it's all bad, you will have run out. What are you doing to also compliment? If you are genuinely born again, there is peace. And genuinely, if you have the peace of God, it flows to others. Peace. 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 Long suffering. Gentleness. 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 Say, go and collect chalk from Brasson. So you say, me? I cannot. What is the problem? You offended me three years ago. And that's why you're still keeping my list. And you're in the same church saying, amen. You have fire as decoration. I tell you, <laughs> your fire is specially designed and it has special decoration. 
So it's not a prayer of breakthrough you need. It's a prayer of repentance. For the heavy burden you have been carrying. Abba. Abba. Someone's stupidity shouldn't make him be stupid. And that's why if you offend me, I'm the one that greet first. You think you are the one that wins. It's a lie. It's me that win. Because the channel to which God answers my prayer, I don't want it to close. Abba. Oh, he said, good morning, Sister Faith. He said, I, said, I win pastor now. I know single greets me first. <laughs> you see, the devil that put that useless, that put that useless ego in you just want to destroy you. He just want to destroy you. But you offend me on Sunday. I don't like what you did. Three months, I won't talk to you. You greet me, I won't answer. You shut down your communication with God because you stop being, you stop manifesting the fruit of the spirit. You are manifesting the works of the flesh, and that's carnal. That's what carnality. And no carnal person has a place with God. Somebody say Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. All right, let's go back to our study. Do we understand the true nature now? The Bible said, first, Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seventeen. He said, "If any man be in Christ, he said, is a new creature. He said, all things are passed away. All these things are supposed to pass away. Malice and all of those nonsense that we read, gossip, drunkenness. You are drinking a bottle of euro before it has increased to three when you got born again. When you now become the head of shadows, that's when you now add that trophy. No. No. You have no part in the kingdom of God because that's still, you are still manifesting carnality and the works of the flesh. Are we together? But the moment now you have Christ in you, love, joy, let people offend you and let them be the one to even trust you that you beg first. Say, I'm sorry, I don't know what I've done. Somebody insulted my father, my mother one day did all man and all. And I didn't tell I didn't tell my mama about it. So one day we were driving home. So I saw the guy on the road, I parked. I said, I'm not angry at you. I said all the things you said I remember, but I'm not angry. The guy looked at me. I said, I'm not angry at you. All the things you said. All those things you said. And I just I said, so be fine. The guy is true, he could not talk. He met her right there. I'm not angry at him. Well, I have the spirit of God. I have my listen. He, he did what was wrong. He did. He was one who did what was wrong. But nevertheless, I shouldn't be stupid because he's stupid. I have the spirit of God. You see? And that was the last time I think I've seen him. Okay, I saw him some days ago. He just greeted me and I greeted him. And since that time, nothing has joined us. All things, if any man be in Christ, let's go back to Second Corinthians five seventeen. If any man be in Christ, he said, All things has passed away. He said, Behold, all things has become what? Can I ask you a question? Be honest. How many things are genuinely new around you since you gave your life to Christ? Is all the things you are praying for, it should not be prayer or breakthrough. Oh God, change my story. I see God is a I see God is Beth Ninja. Oh God, change my story. Oh God, run around my life. Oh God, run around for me to my village. Go and kill the witches. Oh God, if that's what you are doing, no, no. Most of the things we pray about, we don't really need prayer for them. We only need prayer of repentance of the things we are struggling with. The missionary Christian. These are the missionary Christians. The missionary Christians. It begins with you coming with the awareness that you are genuinely born again. Now you are in Christ. All things must pass. And when all things are passed away, all things now become new. What are the things that are genuinely changed around you since you gave your heart to Christ? What are the things? Are all these things in Galatians that we study still manifesting in your life is a night to repent. Someone say amen. amen. Alright, verse 18 now. We, do we understand the scripture now? We understand the old man, we understand the new man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do we understand the scripture now? Can we move further? Verse 18 now. He said, and all things are of God who has reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ. Are we following? And has given unto us the ministry of what? reconciliation. Stop here. Let's take this verse one by one. If this all that we do tonight, we are okay. The missionary Christian. Now you are a child of God. 
The nature of the flesh and the work of the flesh has been crucified. You have been born and new on to live unto Christ. But the Bible begins to teach us here that see, all of us are now of God. Now that you have manifested the fruit of the spirit into the newness of life, you are now engrafted into the family of God. That's why he said all things are of God and he has reconciled us unto himself through Jesus Christ. So we, we, we will come into fellowship with God through the sacrifice of the Christ. But you didn't just come to God just to come and gallivant around. This is one thing the church has stopped preaching. We have actually centered around making people comfortable in church and yet we have not taught responsibility which is actually against the standard of scriptures and that's why Christians suffer. No matter the prayer, I told you of a funny thing sometimes ago, many of you will laugh. But Larry was in that meeting. All of us were praying against monitoring spirits. I was the one leading the prayer. Brother Larry has already led the seven point prayer that we used to write in those days. He led the prayer, he was shouting. And he was shouting very well, he was going from corner to altar. You know the kind of prayer you pray and then you think you are praying. Is that so? So, and I came and I come and lead. Oh God, the man who told me that say you will not succeed. Oh God, this church, all of us pick a corner. So, me too, I pick a corner. Rika Susa. And so, everybody in church was, everybody in church was sweating. And God told me, I don't hear this kind of prayer. Ah. <laughs> that was the last time we stopped praying those prayers. He said, Yeah, don't listen to this. Kind of, you think I listen to all these prayers? You know what God told me? He said, You're just exercising these people. <laughs> you know, sometimes you come to church to exercise. Nobody can command you in your house. Stand up, sit down. You know, it's part of exercise too. All the seven uh, apple you have eaten, nobody can tell you stand up. You stand up, sit down. It's time to stand to pray. You stand, you pray. It's time to dance, you dance. When there's no spirituality attached to it, it's a, it's a form of exercise. That's what God told me. He said, you're only doing exercise. So. He said, this kind of prayer, I don't hear them. Ah! I could not, I could not carry the microphone. When I carry the microphone, I look at everybody. Everybody, pick on a shakaba, shakaba, shakaba. Everybody was mentioning one thing. They were sweating. Like they were fighting. You know the kind of prayer you'll be praying, you'll be fighting. Yourself as see something. I heard God clearly. I don't hear this kind of prayers. You know why? Most of those prayers are born out of irresponsibility. A Christian that is not responsible according to scriptures will pray useless prayers. Any Christian that is not genuinely responsible in line with scriptures will pray useless prayers. All things are now of God. And he has reconciled us unto himself through Jesus Christ. Please, let me read the B part. And he has what? He has given to us the ministry what? Now that you are a child of God, you've crucified the works of the flesh, there is a mandate on you called the ministry of what? Reconciliation. Go to verse 19. What is ministry of reconciliation? He said to wait. That God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Now in putting their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the world of what? Number one, please follow. If you, if, you, if you are writing, write number one. Things to note, ministry of reconciliation. Number two, things to note, word of what? Every one of us has been given the ministry of reconciliation and every one of us has been given what? The word of what? Reconciliation. Verse 20. The last verse is 21. Now, we have, look at the two things we have. We have the ministry of reconciliation. We have the word of reconciliation. Look at verse 20 now. He said, now then, we are ambassador for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled back to who? Look at verse 21. Verse 21. For if he has made us, if, for if he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin? 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in what? Amen. Every one of us that is born anew has passed through a system of the sacrifice of Christ. Now we belong to God, but we have a definite ministry called the ministry of reconciliation. We have a definite ministry with the word of reconciliation. Everyone that is born again must be able to reconcile men back to God with the word of reconciliation. When I traveled to see our Father in the Lord, and I was, praying, I was waiting on the Lord for what God would tell me. You know what God told me? He said, get back and tell these people to do operation, bring a friend. I was praying for me to prosper. I told mama before I left, I said, I'm trusting God for a mantle of wealth. That's one thing I told. That I'm trusting God for a mantle. There's a dimension I'm looking for that I've not seen. I'm trusting God for a mantle of wealth. That's what I told mama before I left. That as I go, I will buy a book, I will read and what I get in that book, I will use it to engage, to actually get something from God. That's what I told Mama. I wrote a few things. And then wrote the name of a few persons in church that were going to be praying about. All of the things that I actually wrote before God, this is what God told me. He said, get back. Tell them. Operation, bring a friend. The people I'm trusting God for to be married, it's not that they won't be married. It's simply because they need to be a friend. That's what God said. The people you are saying, oh God, prosper their business. It's not because I don't want to prosper their business. It's because they neglect the responsibility of the ministry of reconciliation. They are not saved to run after breakthrough. They are saved to be useful in the kingdom of God. Everyone is a missionary Christian. Can I tell you something? If you sit comfortable, relaxed in church only just to say amen, you are not in the category to which God is talking about. Dedication to your job, dedication to every other thing is good. But can I tell you this? Dedication to the ministry of reconciliation because you are a missionary Christian ordained by God after the order of your salvation to bring forth fruit. When our Christianity is not translating to bringing others to Christ, it means the works of the flesh is not properly crucified yet. Many of us cannot stand in our area and say, I decree and declare, Jesus is coming again. When you come, man, they'll say it's not in your mouth. I remember those days when I was staying in Ibadan, in Akpata, Abalamu, Ibadan. I remember. When I come in, I used to invite people to church. I was attending when I was Akpata then. I'll come and they come to the area, bring Ambi to the area, say, all of you, follow me to church. I used to say that in the area. And then there's this fellowship I used to run that we used to preach from schools to schools. So I have guys in the areas who join me in that regard. Can I tell you this? There's a particular Muslim woman who sells bread and is a very popular woman in the area that everybody buys bread from. So one day, I told the woman, I said, I want one of your try to follow me to church. Sorry, there was a fight. And they were fighting, and then somebody was trying to settle them in the fight. And the person was saying, Hey, you're not supposed to behave like that. You follow me to church or something. I'll invite you for a program so that you'll come. And the woman said, He said, If it is people like you that are inviting people to church, it will have been good. Not people like, now the man, the woman was pointing to me. He said, See, he said, if it is people like you that is inviting people to church, it will have been good. Not people like this one. And the woman was not saying it at the back. He was saying it while all of us were there. It was bread we wanted to buy. We made a fight. We were trying to settle. So the person was trying to settle the issue and say, the way you are manifesting, you need some deliverance. Come to, do you understand the scenario? He said, if it is people like, he said, if it is people like this <laughs> uh, brother that is inviting people to church, he said, it will have been good. It's not, it's not people like you now. Uh, in this area, we know you. And he began to do CV. After they did the CV, I was embarrassed myself. You know why? If we have not, one of the things that hinder us from being a missionary Christian is that we have not been able to work on ourselves to produce good character that is actually consistent with the nature of Christ. And let me tell you this. If we are not going to actually be in alignment to work on ourselves to produce good character that will be consistent with the nature of Christ, can I tell you one thing we are doing to ourselves? 
we are stopping the agenda of God. There, are, there is a brother here, there is a sister here, that God saved you so that your family can be saved. There are people here that your prayers is the one sustaining your family. If you do not walk under your nature of flesh, when destruction happens in that family, their blood will be on you. That's how God created this. And that's why every Christian is a missionary Christian. Must produce the ministry of reconciliation according to the word of reconciliation. When your life is not attracting soul and then upholding the pillar of Christ anywhere you are found, let me tell you something. You are stopping the agenda of God in that atmosphere and God will replace you. God humorously told me one day that your father was one time born again. It's true. My dad was one time born again and he attended the Baptist. My mom told me the story of how he prays for people and people get healed before he backslided. He recounted that one of my sisters used to have some stomach issues and my dad got angry one day and prayed and was healed. And that my sister was healed. This sister is still healed, you know. I'm telling you what happened more than 50 years ago. The sister is still healed, you know. But can I tell you this? He backslided. When he backslided, the agenda and the pillar of God that's supposed to be risen from that family stopped. I was praying one night, and God told me. After that, I heard that story, and God spoke to me. He said, you dare mess up. I still have somebody in that family that will replace you was you. God even mentioned the name to me. He said, you dare misbehave not to sustain this reality because your father failed. I still have somebody that will replace you. The person that God was telling me to, that will replace me if I mess up, the person is still misbehaving till now. He's not even close to Christianity. He's so, he, if I tell you his kind of lifestyle, you'll be surprised. Meaning in the heart of God, you dare mess up. Someone you think is less, use, someone you think that is useless will be the one that will replace you with. There are many replaced people in the agenda of God in church. So instead of us praying for the prayer of breakthrough, oh God, prosper me, could be the prayer of repentance because we have neglected responsibility. And that's why many of us are still on the same page. God is too responsible. He won't keep you at the same speed and the same spot for life. But the question is, how many of us are genuinely responsible? How many? Matthew 24. Malahaski Bahata. Are we sit together? If you still like me, say amen. All right. Is the word of God? Is that so? Matthew 24. Can we start from verse, 20, verse 1? Or we'll go back. We'll, let's start maybe from verse, verse 5 down the line. Matthew 24. Let's, have, let's cut some. We can start from verse 7. Matthew 24. Okay, let's start from here. Let's start from verse 5. He said, Many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. Move further. Verse 6. But you shall hear of the wars and rumors of war. Let's start reading from verse 1 so that we have understanding. Missionary Christian. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Verse 2. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left. Here, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Verse 3. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these signs be? What shall be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5. Let no man deceive you. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. We have many people who are saying they are Christ now. I was looking at my phone yesterday. Somebody says he's the king of kings, lord of law. Lunga, lunga. What did they call the nonsense? Do you understand what I'm saying? He's the lord of law. Many people have come and they're even professing that they are Christ. 
you have seen it. The word of God is fulfilled. But you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse 7. How many of you know that there's actually rumors of war everywhere? Ukraine fighting Russia, Russia fighting this, uh, South Sudan having, how many of you are following? There are rumors of war. As a matter of fact, the United States of America is already preparing for World War Three because they are losing relevance in some few things. And this is why, you see, that's why we need to be reading Bible and then follow some few news so that you will know that the Bible is not, it's not dead. This is one thing people don't know. The Bible is a book of prophecy. There is no book of prophecy that is very accurate like the Bible. None. Be a good student of history, you will testify to what I'm saying. There is no book of history that has actually lingered for long that is genuine and the prophecies are accurate. How many of you remember that as I already said that Israel will have their capital as Jerusalem? How many of you remember? They do not do it. Prophecy fulfilled. Many end time is we are in the end time. Is that so? Let's not go there. Maybe I'll teach you about the end time one of these days so that we understand. That it's not just money we need. It's not just all those things follows. All those things follows. All right. For nations shall rise up against nations and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. Verse eight. All these things are the beginning of what? Verse nine. But all, he said, then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and they shall be hated. Of all nations, for my name's sake. Let me tell you something. There are countries where you don't preach Christ right now. There are, do you know Jerusalem, Israel is proposing a bill to bind Christianity from oppression? How many of you know that? How many of you have seen? How many of you have seen that? Israel, Israel is proposing a bill right now to bind Christianity. Israel. Israeli is proposing a bill to ban what? Put it on Google. You have my you have my permission to check your phone. I will see following. He said, "Then shall be then." <laughs> I love this one. And then there's, and then shall many be what? And betray one another. And shall be hated by one another. This is one of the major prophecies that is happening in church now. You people hate pastors. Who tell them the truth? Somebody was hungry at me one day. I said, Come inside, come and tell me what you're angry about. He said, Because you tell me I come late. God will judge me if I lie to you. I called him to my office one day. He said, He's angry at me. I said, Why are you angry? He said, Because you tell me I come late. <laughs> be the judge. You too, be the judge. Why did you come late to church? He said, that's how I'm angry at him. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Are we together? Are we learning? Am I boring you? All right. Verse 11. Let's quickly go there. I want to stop at verse 14. And many false prophets shall rise. Like the one that tell you when you sleep like this, you see cockroach. It's one thing pursuing you is a lie. They just want to collect your money. Three cockroaches cost to three witches from your village. When they walk like this, it's in circle. Lie. You will never, most of the prophets who, who, are, who will never preach the word of God always just want to tell you at, at the end is just to get something to your pocket. They are false. Fake. 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 And you know, in our generation, we have many prophetic voices. I wrote against it during the election. There are many prophetic voices that, have, that are actually rooted in, it, in Satan. Lying to people. If you followed the last election, you discover that many prophets prophesy nonsense. I see Atiku becoming president. I see this one becoming... All of them are proved wrong now. I told you many things are manipulated. These are the persons that will become... I told some of you, you, you can be a witness. It happened exactly as I told you. So we are not commercial prophets. I 
And I told you how this thing was manipulated. Let's not go there tonight. Many false prophets will rise and they shall deceive what? Their primary assignment is to deceive. Let's move further. Verse 12. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wash cold. Are you saying this? Even in church, if you preach against sin, people get angry. Stop fornication. Say what's your own? It's my body. But I'm commanded to tell you. He said, Pastor, it's my life. But I'm commanded to tell you. He said, I just need a babalao to help me and see things. And yet I will remain walking in church. No. Over my dead body. I would rather die than pastor nonsense. Over my dead body. Because iniquity will abound and the love of many shall grow cold. Look at verse 13. He said, But he that shall endure to the end, he said, The same shall be what? Look at verse 14. That's this where I'm going. This is where I'm going. And please read with me. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be what? Preach in all the what? For a witness unto all nations. What will now happen? Then the end shall come. Let me explain this. The second coming of Jesus does not depend on an event. It depends on a message. When everybody hear the gospel of Christ and is a witness to all nations, that's when Jesus will come. So the second coming of Jesus does not depend on an event. It depends on the message. The message that the message of salvation gets across to everybody. Let me say this. When Christians are non-missionary in their approach, they are just seeking breakthroughs, building houses and dedicating, giving in to marriage, which is good. But that's not the real thing. The real thing is that will become mobile gospel that we tell people about the gospel of Christ. Can I tell you this? We are indirectly injuring the agenda of God from coming to pass. Many of us are the reason why Jesus will not come back on time. And don't forget, if we hinder the flow that Jesus will not come back on time, many will keep suffering. Because the God of this world will subject many people to torment. Didn't you read it? False prophets will not begin to rise. And when they begin to rise, they will begin to deceive many. Christianity will no longer make meaning to people anymore. Many people have come from conspiracy that Jesus is a white man, is a lie. Jesus is a black man. The, the Bible in Ethiopia is older than the European Bible. Put it on Google. Jesus is not a white man. They only hide under the history of our, of, of our culture, as of our region as the case might be, to actually penetrate for slave trade. The first Christianity move that ever flowed to Africa that came in through that came in through Benin in the 17th century came from Portugal. And when it came from Portugal, they actually turned into slave trade. The people that brought it are not born again. They were not Christians. They only saw that the agenda was their Berlin conference, and they are looking for a system to be able to penetrate Africa after dividing Africa into colony. And when they have divided Africa into colony, they are looking for a system to penetrate, and they come in religion because they know that we are religious people. We have culture that was working. We have study history and understand these things. People will tell you, you don't mind them. Christianity is of this. It's a white man. It lies from here. The Ethiopian Bible. Is older than the European Bible. Put it on Google. Ethiopian Bible has been in existence before King James. So it's not a white man religion. Jesus was never white. Yeshua was black. It's not today to trace history. I will have shown you. But and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Let me tell you this the ministry of reconciliation has been given to all of us. Can I tell you this as we close? If you are not winning so to God, you are part of the people the devil is using to stop the agenda of God for Jesus to come on time. Believe me. Tap your neighbor, what are you? Is, it, is this hard? But well, this is the truth. Are we reading the Bible? I'm sorry, but this is 
I'm sorry, in case I offend your emotion or feelings. In case I offend your feelings or emotion, sorry, but this is the Bible. The, the coming of Jesus Christ does not depend on an event. It depends on the message. And the message is, Jesus is Lord, and every nation will hear. And as all nations hear, that's when Jesus will not come. Because there will be no evidence again that you have not heard about Jesus. That will be the time of judgment. Don't, have you not read? In the the Apostles chapter 17 and verse 30, he said God has appointed a day to judge the world. How God will judge the world? In what? Eh? Oh, you are not following. You are not reading the Bible. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. Can we start a Bible club in this church? You are not reading. We all of us will read five, five chapters every day and we'll come and be discussing it. I think we should do a Bible club. These are the things we will grow up with. After the Apostle 17 and verse 30, let's read. He said, He has appointed a day that he will judge the whole world in righteousness. We'll come back to this scripture. Acts 17 30. Acts 17 30. All right, I want to keep to time. I'll just read one more, one more scripture. It's only three I've read now. So I'll just read one more scripture and then we'll close. Did somebody, did somebody understand what God is saying to us tonight? Are we still together? Thank you. Acts 17 30. Are we there? And the time of ignorance has passed. Is that so? Is that the time of ignorance God has worked, God has forgotten? But now has commanded all men everywhere to what? Verse 31. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world. In what? How will God judge? How will God judge? So the righteous reign is, is coming. And in that righteous reign is when Jesus has come. And then it will be judgment to the wicked where the righteous will reign with God. Are we together? Are we still learning? Are we still learning? But what will facilitate the second coming of Jesus is actually dependent on the message. Not an event. There will always be rumors of war. There will always be all of this. People here will be given a marriage and all of that. But can I tell you this? And I can guarantee you, anyone that is not a missionary Christian engaging in winning souls and getting them established is actually injuring the flow of how Jesus will come on time. We are too wise in our days that we make fun of everything. It's a system of carnality to rob us of the agenda of God. I know the wave that has come as Christianity in this country. The healing wave, the apostolic wave. I can, I can begin to tell you the wave, the Aladra movement, and all of that, and how Christianity came into this country. To the movement to which we are in, and the one we are looking at. So that's why some of us will not be casual about this things. I wrote a material about it more than 10 years ago. That I wrote after reading. If you are not a missionary Christian winning souls, you see this operation bring a friend. It's not an agenda of the church. It's an agenda of Christ. I tell you by the spirit of the living God. I didn't say it to myself. I had names of people who have written to pray. I have the things I already told mama agree with me as I go to pray. That, and I was very consistent as case may be. The first night, I just lay down for like two hours there about. I woke up in the night and I trek longer distance, like trekking from here to Garimpa. Inside, inside the place. I prayed my life out. I prayed to the point that my system self adjusted. You know, the way you pray to a point that your system itself adjusted. The second night, some friends gathered around me. They could not allow me to sleep. So I started talking to them. I spoke to them from evening. See, like around 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. thereabout. After we talked, like 3 a.m., we talked for long. So, okay, I said, I'm coming home. I said, I'm coming. I make them to sleep. I sneak out. Kako, shaka, kepa, eke, usha, kara. I came back just to put my back on the floor. After praying, and the Lord told me, tell them, Operation, bring a friend. The question is, the one I pray, oh God, let this one get married. He said, tell them, Operation, bring a friend. The one I say, oh God, prosper. Tell them, Operation, bring a friend. The one I even ask for, oh God, give me a mantle. Give me a mantle. 
of a particular dimension of wealth. I wrote it down. Give me a mantle of a particular dimension of wealth. My answer is operation. Bring a friend. Let me tell you this. When God wants to change the story of particular people, he puts them in the center of his will by time. Ash! I pray we are not going to fail. Believe me. Believe me. If I pray, God forbid that we fear God in this season because it's going to be a repetition that we might never recover from. Every missionary Christian fulfills the agenda of God to quicken the second coming of Christ. You can't be quickening the second coming of Christ by preaching and seeing people established and God will not bless you with all the prayers you are praying. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be what? Hardened. You can't be seeking the interest of the kingdom of God and the area of your life will not reflect a glory that will be consistent to the God you confess to people. I'm grateful to God and I can say it without any reservation. There's nobody in this church that I'm a liability to. None! That if this one did not do, I will for what? This church has never paid my rent once. Once. I just engaged on a travel that cost close to about 500 there, but this church didn't give me a dime. Not one. Not one dime. And I'm on the altar of the most I go. Non one naira from church account was in that journey. But they are supposed to be as responsible for my travel experiences expenses because this has to do with ministry. But I didn't request. You can actually profess God, and there will not be glory that is in alignment that is consistent with the God you profess. Do you understand what I'm saying? God is not a user, he's a rewarder of them that diligently a missionary Christian is one let me round up now let me give you three definitions and I'll close a missionary Christian is one in soul winning and in soul establishment according to the scriptures we have read a missionary Christian is one in soul winning and in what? and in soul establishment the meaning of that is this People that are in market it does not have an excuse not to win once in a week. When new persons don't follow you to church, it means what you are selling is above the interest of God. And that's why many of us do businesses and the businesses just last for a while. It does not translate. Because if what you are doing cannot translate into eternity, it is called vanity. And how do what you are doing right now will translate into eternity? You are working in the market right now, you are not going to work in market forever. But in the market where you are working, how many people will you be able to bring to Christ? That is, you have translated that position to eternity. So a missionary Christian is one. In soul winning, and in soul what? Establishment and the church. Number two, a missionary Christian is one fulfilling the interests of God part time. Fulfilling the interests of God part time. The interest of God part time. The interest of God part time. Go ye to all the worlds. Matthew chapter 28, read from verse 18 to 20. He said, Baptize him in the name of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and commanded this thing that I have taught you. He said, For I am with you always. You see, a missionary Christian is one that is actually in pursuit of the agenda of God, that is, the interest of God. I'm engaging seriously in even spending money towards this adventure. I'm honest here. Yeah. I know I might not be able to go places plenty. So that I can be able to stay with God in some consistent thing. But I engage my resources. I speak with some few persons, okay, this is what you do for me. I pay them for it. But I'm engaging. The money I spent last week, I've never spent it on so many before. So don't be surprised, God is blessing me. If you are even jealous, God will kill you. Because the sacrifice is too tangible. Say, I don't know what is this. You, don't, you just waste your life for free. There are dangerous things behind these things that many of us don't know, and I'm honest. 
Anybody will tell me because your trousers did not come to church. Even if it's last money, I'll, I'll drop it. It's my last money. I'm sorry to say this and I'm honest. On Sunday, after spending a few money engaging this and the rest of that, I had, could not even have offered it to drop on Sunday. But did I go broke? All the money I had everywhere, everywhere was invested in this thing. And I can tell you what I did with them. To the point that on Sunday we couldn't drop off. All this, all that, all this, all that. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. I'm not telling you to do that. This is a commitment. I said, man. But there's no one engaging in that. I'm not just going about to just tell people be saved alone. I still engage people. You never broke. Check what I'm doing. Number three. Are we understanding this? A missionary Christian is a true disciple and a true witness of Christ. A true disciple. After the apostle chapter one and verse eight, can we quickly check that one? Is a true disciple and a true witness of Christ. That's who a missionary Christian is. A true disciple. After the Apostle 1 8, Acts 1 8, Acts of the Apostle chapter 1 and verse 8. A true disciple. A true what? Disciple. Turn your business place to an altar. Let your Facebook preach Christ. If all that you celebrate on your Facebook is how your, how your picture is fine, your Facebook does not translate to eternity. Yeah. I can count people who come to this church because of my social media. Sister Leticia is, has, wave your hand. Let them know I'm not lying. Where do I meet you? Online, online, online. This year, she's here. So if what you post is just to be dancing comedy, just to be, we already wasted effort, wasted brain, wasted, wasted data. Online, online, online. You have, I've never met her anywhere in the world. Online. Back of the key persons who started this work with us in 2020, we were met online. Bro, don't say hallelujah. Tell them where I met you. Facebook. It's one of our useful workers today. One of our most useful workers today. Online. online. My Facebook is even missionary. Not enjoyment. That makes you a true witness. After the apostle 1 verse 8. He said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be what? You shall be what? You shall be what? And if you are witness, where will you start from? From Jerusalem to Judea and to what? And to the uttermost part of what? Tell me one thing that reaches to the uttermost part of the world now. Like internet. I have disciples in London. I have disciples in the U.S. I have disciples in uh, Zambia. I have disciples in uh, Kenya. People who call me Papa. That what I see becomes the direction of their destiny. Yeah. Online. A true a, a missionary Christian is one that is actually a true disciple and a true witness of Christ. Everything around you reaches out. Everything. Everything around you reaches out. If all you do is to look for a birthday picture to find and then do pancake, one way, do leg, one kind, and then post the say happy birthday. You, you know inside you that does not even translate to anything. I'm not saying it's bad. It's a system of appreciation so that people will know it's your birthday and they can appreciate you for your contribution to life. It's good. But can I tell you this? Let it translate to eternity. You can't check two of my posts, two, and you will not find Jesus in them. No post will I post, you will not find Jesus in it. No post. For what? It's not because I'm a pastor. I joined Facebook in 2008. Go and hold it, my Facebook for 2008. It has reflected Christ consistently. I wasn't a pastor then. Somebody still begged me to be hosting an online meeting today. Nedisa. Nedisa is her name. 
still beg me to be hosting an online meeting today. Today, early this morning. I said, I do not have that time as much again because I have a lot of things to deal with so that my destiny can be preserved. Because online can be a distraction sometimes. You'll be meeting people truly, but many things will not be growing on your own. So Leticia has begged me many times, say, after this time, structured time, I've tried it, the thing did not work. So, so winning is not as difficult as we think. It's our heart that is in trouble. If we are genuinely missionary, ah, if you are genuinely missionary, your post cannot be consistent. Many of us watch the post on Facebook, it's just the fleshy kind of nature manifesting iniquity. We become lovers of ourselves. That's what the Bible said that's going to be the sign of the end time. We become lovers of ourselves. All for ourselves and for I'm too conscious of Christ to do anything. That's a missionary Christian. That's what? Can I stop here? I guess you don't maybe you don't like this one. Glory to God. Can we pray? Let's stop here. A missionary Christian is one that is into soul winning and soul establishment. A missionary Christian is two that is actually doing the agenda of God in every season. A missionary Christian is a true disciple and a true witness of Christ. In everywhere you are found, Operation Bring a Friend is to be a system for every one of us to go wide. To go what? Wide. And go out. You say, oh, church evangelism is just once in a month. No, no. But evangelism is every day. It's every day. The corporate one might be once in a month, but the daily one should be every day. I mean, your own personal should be every day. Your own should be every day. How many people truly know Jesus because you know Jesus? How many people truly come to Christ because you, you know Christ? You say, hey, I don't want to force them. I don't like offending people. I'm not, I'm not afraid of offending you. And let God be true. Check the basis to which you're offended in me. You'll discover that it's the scripture I preach to you. One young man left us here, came back after three years, and he told me, he said, the things you taught me were hard, but those are the things I'm living by today. Samson or Derewu is the name. Find out who I'm talking about. He said, the things you taught me were hard. It was hard that I could not hold it at that time. He said, but these things are the things I'm living with. He said, since I left you, there's no church I entered that I don't become a minister immediately. And the things you taught me are the things I hold on to. You know how many ministers who have risen from me? Plenty. Because I don't compromise standard. You can't hang around me genuinely and your heart is open in few things. Ah, you should be genuinely on fire. Because I don't compromise. It is hard, but I am bad. Righteous could not have anything to speak against me than this guy is too hard. That's what he told Apostle James. He said, this guy is too hard. Three days, no food, no begging. We are just there. He looked at him and said, we are not fasting, sir. He was one who wanted to go and borrow kunu from somewhere after three days. I mean, I wanted to continue until food come. I said, until God send food, we will be here. Three days, first day, no food. I was there. He was with me. Second day, no food. I was there. The third day, when it was around four, he said, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. He said, Excuse me, sir. I know Nesta. Nesta is her name. If I collect Kuno and bread there, they will not complain. Any day we have money, we'll pay back. If you continue like. <laughs> so I wanted to help the guy's faith. I said, Okay, go. I can be that dogged. I can be that dogged. That until God happened, we won't press. Missionary Christians are people who are actually sold out for the interest of the kingdom of God. Not excuses. People will hate you. Bible says so. Matthew 24. They will hate you because of me. Don't go to Judu house. He said, I don't like that pastor. He's too black. Why are you angry? He said, no go to Judu house. Said, Why are you angry at me? He said, excuse me, you, you used to tell me I come late. <laughs> Think about that. So people will naturally be offended at you when you actually tell them what is right. But let me say this. Nobody do well under bad teacher. You will love bad teacher, but your destiny will be in prison. Nobody do well under bad teacher. All the parents that make their children comfortable, their, their children grow to even hate them and speak against them. Say that I will slap you if you don't arrange now. I've seen it before. The church, you are out telling the father, Daddy, remember I came you last week. You don't misbehave. I've seen it before. In Lucy, I can mention the name. It's from Delta. Because you refuse to train them. 
But we that we are bold enough to say, no, no, what is wrong? Stand right. You say, it's too harsh. It's too bad. No, they will hate you because you are saying what is right. But they cannot deny the faith truly. Why? Because we are sold out for the interest of the kingdom of God. And they say so. It's hard. It can be lonely. I stand alone sometimes. I look around, I know there's no one. Who I can back on that is with me? None. But I know it's God I stand. Who hates me, who likes me, doesn't matter. If God be for me, those against me are only under the mercy of God. Because they that hate you will be afflicted with you didn't read it. This is scripture. Sorry, you came or you hear this one, you have come. <laughs> this is hard, you have come. You hear this one. Glory to God. Can we close? How many of you will pray? I will not fear God. Is that a good prayer? I will not be an entrance to the move of